Good day everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a, a very different topic. Uh, I haven't talked about it until now. Um, it, it's about uh, big objects. So when you think about uh, Salesforce as a SaaS platform, right, where you can store information uh, under uh, custom objects, standard objects, right? Uh, these all information, uh, the records which you store, right, uh, they, they are going to be counted uh, as organization uh, data storage, as a part of organization data storage, right? Imagine a scenario, right, where you wanted to store like seven years worth of data, right? Log information, whatever information, right? You're going to choke up your the data space if you're using a normal custom object, right? Or other option is that you might have to use a cloud, let's say AWS, and you're gonna have to store the data there. And when you wanted to do that, you know, you retrieve it. That's that's a pretty painful process, right? Or you might have even heard about the concept like big data, right? So you don't have to do any of this stuff, right? And uh, you know, if let's say if you wanted to uh, store information for compliance purpose, right? For instance, the law firms, right? Uh, in law firms, you're supposed to store uh, previous data, as, I think, for seven years or something like that. So imagine you have a chunk of data, massive amount of customer data, right? And all data which you do not want to get rid of it. So you can move that as uh, to, to an ar archive. So in that case, the, the big uh, object comes very handy. Um, so the big objects is is very interesting topic as I mentioned. So for one of the reason as I'm talking about, if you wanted to do data analysis uh, on a uh, on a old data, right, which gets uh, which is stored uh, for whatever re for whatever thing you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to do a sales comparison of, of you know of millions of records, you can you can do that uh, using a big uh, objects. So what we're going to do today, right? Everything is done using Salesforce. Uh, we're not going to go anywhere outside to look for the solution. We don't have to uh, seek help of AWS or Azure or Hadoop or whatever, right? We don't need any of this stuff, right? Everything can be done uh, using Salesforce itself. So that's where the big object comes in picture. So the, the point of uh, today's lecture is to show you how to create a uh, a big object add fields you have to add index right uh, I'm not gonna use developer console to do that uh, to create a big object instead we're gonna use point and click pretty nice and easy right you can use uh, Visual Studio code to do that as well but I'm not gonna use that just to keep it simple right so the first thing first you need to register for an org right I'm using a free developer org so uh, I'm under setup at this point of time uh, if you do not know how to go to setup, you can go to this um, get get icon, icon and will and from there you can go to setup. Right, nice and easy, pretty simple. And under quick find, uh, type for big objects. So it will it comes under data. So I already have created one uh, in the past. So I'm gonna create a new it's just to give you a, a context how to do that. So let's go to new, right? And I'm gonna tell you some of the problems you might face. So uh, let's say, uh, we're gonna say, mm, what's name? We say bacon, bacon object, right? So let's say if you're a peer person who loves to eat bacon and egg every day. So let's say we have a customers who will be eating bacon and egg for every uh, breakfast different style. Some likes to add paprika flavor, some likes to add oregano on top of it. So you know just just an example right we are we are tracking information of people who eat bacon and egg and then let's say we have historical data of let's say 50,000 uh, record daily record of people right cool uh, so that's I know it's a funny object but who cares right so uh, I'm gonna save and so the, the the fields, right? The custom field. Let's say uh, we're gonna use. Uh, we can use a lookup field, right? We can actually use a lookup relationship. Uh, let's look up a. Um, um, we can look up a contact. And uh, we can look up a contact because I wanted to know. Uh, come on. So I wanted to know um, the customer who's eating. Uh, 
uh, bacon uh, an egg for breakfast so okay and so I'm gonna make it visible and I'm gonna say next and I'm gonna say next right I'm gonna say save right okay and we create a one and then I want let's say for the sake of argument we're going to talk about we're going to create a description field a uh, very simple description don't want to do fancy description um so we're going to do uh let's say uh bacon ideas right so yeah we're, we're called so let's say 255 that's for now we'll do the job um so if you see the difference right it's pretty much like creating a custom field right so you know uh, if you know how to create a custom object and custom field, right, then uh, you might feel the concept is pretty much similar. Uh, the only difference is that um, uh, in when you create a custom object, right, you will get underscore C, right? In this case, you will get uh, underscore and score uh, B, right? So, because it's a, it's a big object, so you're going to save it, right? Okay, now... You might see one thing, right? We have index warning here. To complete the big object setup, you need to create an index, right? Now, you might wonder why I can't see an index here, right? Remember, if you wanted to use a field as an index, you need to make that field as a required field. But in our case, none of the fields are required field, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, uh, you can add one more field. Uh, just for the sake of argument, we're going to add a number field. We can call it as a... The thing with the, uh, you know, you don't have... Salesforce won't force you uh, for a uh, unique, uh, you know, that, that uh, in, in, in other objects, right? Standard object, right? Salesforce, uh, make sure that Salesforce ID is a primary key. In this case, you can choose whichever you want, right? So, <clears throat> okay, so I would say it as a key. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I will make this as required. See the difference, right? Okay. And um, so I'm gonna call it next, and I'm gonna do save. Okay. Right. So now you see uh, the index is enabled because we made, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the key field as required field. So I'm gonna do new, and I'm gonna say index key. Uh, in, uh, sorry, index key. Uh, index position, you can see it one, and if you wanted to make it sending or descending, uh, just gonna make it sending, right? Just to make it simple, <clears throat> all right? So, there you are, you have your <clears throat> uh, big uh, object created, that's a bacon object, so you see, uh, as I said, the API name, uh, it's got appended, uh, you know, underscore, underscore B, right? So we're going to tag this object here. Let's go to developer console and I'll show you how to query it and probably how to write uh, insert a statement, right? Um, because it's a little bit interesting. I'll show you why. Uh, you can't do a normal insert. So, um, so hopefully, right, okay. So I'm going to delete this one. <clears throat> And so we're gonna do to uh sorry query editor. So we're gonna do select star sorry select from right and so I'm gonna do let me see the name of the field contact. <clears throat> so I'm gonna so contact will be your uh, um so this is a contact, so you see there is, there is no record here, right? Okay, now what we're gonna do, let's look at one contact. Okay, and let's go to contact here for a second. All right, and we gonna, we're gonna pick up any contacts you want. It doesn't matter, it just, it's a demo, so it should not matter. So we're gonna choose this, this guy here, and we're gonna take the ID for now. Um, but it's not a good practice what I'm showing you, but I just show you show I want to show you how to insert a data to a big object so you understand what I'm trying to do. And I'm gonna do no part here, and I'll just copy it here, right? <clears throat> okay. Um I wanted to write down the name of the other fields as well. Um so I'm just gonna do this here. And I'm gonna do key uh because it's a primary key, so it's required, so you just have to put 
whatever you want it to do. <clears throat> okay. Nice and easy, right? Right. Okay. So, as usual, if you know how to use Apex code to create a, a record, it's pretty straightforward, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, if you're a developer, you will know how to do that. So, let's do it simple. So, let's say B equals new, right? And um, so, I'm going to do B dot. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm not going to bulkify it because I'm, I'm just inserting one record if you wanted to bulkify it. Uh, you can insert multiple records, so that's your choice. Okay, and uh, so we're gonna do. All right, so I will. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do this. A contact b dot. Um, this is just a simple way to key. Uh, just put it whatever one. Just one right b dot. Um, for some reason, intelligence doesn't work. When I use uh, Developer Console, um, especially in the anonymous window, so I uh, just uh, this is my favorite bacon and egg dish. I mean, uh, in New Zealand, you get bacon and egg uh, pie as well. So if you're a fan of it, so yeah. Uh, so we got immediate. Um, I think it's. Uh, I forgot then I think it's immediate insert so I suppose that it is <clears throat> I always remember forgot the name so uh just let me uh second just me Google it so database dot insert immediate right sorry uh insert immediate so insert Im ugh, immediate right so Okay, and let's do execute. So it's executed, right? No problems. Okay, so this is how you insert it. Uh, and uh, so let's go here. And for now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna run this again. Uh, so oh, we're gonna do key. All right, and it's gonna close this one close this one and yeah so we got inserted the data right so <clears throat> that's how you insert the data now let me show you one, one more stuff <clears throat> so this is my favorite bacon and dish egg right okay now um, if you wanted to do something like let's say I'm gonna say do this right and um, I don't know just a second. All right, and I'll take this off. So, if you try to do something like this, right? If you want, if you wanted to uh, do a basic insert, so I'll show you what happens. Right? It complains, right? You can't use. Uh, so argument must be of internal as subject type use these two instead right so that's one of the reason why you can't use a normal insert so that's why I used um, so now if you wanted to do a, uh, a bulk insert you can do that as well now I'll tell you one funny thing with the bulk insert right so let me show you one thing so let's list off I hope you guys know how to do a bulk uh, insert it's a bulkify a code and you're doing an insert, uh, BLS, uh, so, right, so new list, right, okay, and, uh, um, okay, so we're going to do for uh, integer i am equals to one, sorry, equals to two, right, i less than, say, 100. I'm just doing a massive, uh, a rubbish data insert that's that's all I'm trying to do right and um, so you're gonna do here and so in this case we'll be uh, so okay so you're gonna do control a then uh, shift tab to a line right and what we're gonna do so we're gonna add a plus um, so okay so we're gonna do plus um, string dot value of integer so just gonna do 
um, I, right? And um, so, and then we have to do um, BLS dot add, right? And so we're gonna do, and then we're gonna do BLS. So, so what I've done, so this is how you bulkify your code, right? Because if you keep on doing insert 50 times, right? It will, or more than 100 of them, it will hit, uh, in real life scenario, it will hit a so-called limit. So that's why it's often says that if you wanted to do an insert operation, right? You need to put that into collection and, and then do one insert at the end. Okay, so let's run this boy and see what happens. Okay, now it's running. Uh, you can uh, actually debug the log if you want using Visual Studio, uh, right? So you download it and then you use into Visual Studio to debug it if you if you wanted to trace, uh, you know, each and every line and what the item looks like. So that's the best way you can use it. I hope you guys know how to do that. If you do not know, please let me know. I'll, I'll make a video next time. Um, so that's, okay, so that's done. And what we're going to do, so uh, we're going to query this. Right now, you might wonder what the heck happened, right? Just why only one record? Because most of the because the reason why I'll show you why. So let me change this information, right? Pay attention here, right? All of the information was the same except this one, right? That's just the text field. So I'm gonna change this to i plus one. Just make it I plus one and let's run it again. Now let's run this boy here and close this one, close this one and execute it. Right, so what happened was, right, you got three fields in, in current scenario, right? So all you were doing, changing this field value, right? So, and rest everything is same. So what it do, does at the end of uh, the loop, it puts the latest value, that's pretty much, because there's no point in creating a new record, right? So now we see the key is different, the bacon ID is different, so it created a new uh, entry altogether, right? So this is one way you can do an insert. I'm not saying this is a correct way or, or it's a great way. I'm just showing you how to do that. If you wanted to test it, if you wanted to do uh, insert it, right? Um, you can, um, so you can't use a normal insert. So that's one of the things you should keep into consideration. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. The big data is, is uh, sorry, big object. Uh, comes very handy if you, like I said, if you wanted to archive uh, old records, right? So if you have millions of records you want to archive, you can make use of the uh, big objects. So that comes very handy instead of putting those into custom objects. Let's say your log information and all this kind of stuff, right? So yeah, keep this into consideration and, and, and see how it fits into your business uh, requirement. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so I'm thinking uh, from next time on was I want to start talking about lightning uh, development. Uh, we're going to cover about how to build a lightning component and kind of stuff, right? Because it's now uh, we can't even touch on our components kind of stuff because when I when I talked about platform developer one, I didn't cover much about lightning. Yes, I've showed you uh, guys about basic stuff, how to create a hello world, but that's not really good enough, right? So we will go a little bit uh, in depth. So uh, I will cover, I try to start that series from next time because usually I often try to target certification, right? Platform developer one I've done, I builder I've done. I'm planning to do uh, Einstein. So probably from next month, I'm gonna looking at doing Einstein. Um, so if that's something interesting, you guys, uh, if not, uh, give me a shout. Uh, I will start uh, integration designer. Uh, so whichever, right? So, right, that being said, uh, greetings and adios from New Zealand. Take care. Bye-bye.